Let's break it. Well, welcome back to part three. And believe it or not, we're still not done with the power supply on this radio. There's some more things I want to cover. Like I told Brendan, I'm going to beat this thing to death. So, you know, there won't be any question in anybody's mind as to what will happen when things are, you know, messed up in the power supply. We've already covered everything uh, except that resistor right there. And I also disconnected each of these, each of these uh, electrolytic capacitors, one, and then hooked it back up, and then disconnected the other and hooked it back up. But I should have maybe disconnected both of them and to see what would happen. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, let me see. I have a little note here. One more thing I wanted to cover about this plate voltage on this rectifier going through one side of that uh, filament. This is a filament, okay? And what? why didn't they just, you know, why would they run it into the tube through one half of the of the filament and then go up and supply the voltage to the plate? Why didn't they just tap off right here and just go up this way and over and down to the plate? Why not just tap straight off the line? Why am I go this, uh, you know, this uh, detour route here? Well, there's a reason for that. What happens if this tube starts to draw a ton of current? What happens is, in order to shut the circuit down, in order to protect the tube, to protect the circuit, they decided to use half of that filament as a fuse. That's what's going on there. You know, it's a fuse. The filament will blow just like a normal fuse. And I suppose they could have tapped off of, uh, well, they couldn't really if they wanted to use the current rate draw through the tube. But it's just a fuse. Okay, that's why they did it. I, when I first saw that, I said, you know, this was a couple of years ago, several years ago, actually. I said, you know, why would they run it through the, through the filament? Well, now we know, okay? Now, one other thing is I went ahead and I, just, I reconnected the capacitor that came out of this radio. I wanted to show you, uh, let you see what it sounded like. You look on the side of the capacitor, it says that, uh, let me get the glare off of here. It says that B is the 75 microfarad C is the 30 and A is the common between them so A is the common and then there's C and B on this particular uh, electrolytic capacitor they're labeled that way okay always look on the body of your capacitor your large electrolytic it'll give you the information you need it may it may be just a symbol that you have to go on the bottom of the cap, of the cap and look at and the symbol will compare to what the numbers are in the body of the capacitor. But there will usually, you know, there's always something there. So let me go ahead and turn on this radio and I'll show you. I've got the, the new caps still disconnected here and here. They're disconnected out of the circuit. So let's plug it in and I'll let you hear what it sounded like. This is what the original capacitor sounded like when I first got the radio and turned it on. It's just a steady, monotonous hum. And the volume control does not change the hum okay we did not hear this in the last video I wanted you to hear this and uh, now when I turn the volume up of course it'll increase the if the capacitor is somewhat working uh, you know it's pretty dried out this one the, the both of these capacitors are pretty dried out but they're somewhat working and I, I can crank up the volume and it'll increase the volume of the radio station if you know if you're getting any at all but the steady 60 cycle hum that you're hearing right there will not change. It'll stay the same level. See, now the volume of the station goes up, but the hum, see, I'll crank it down. The hum stays the same, never changes. And what's causing, I want to go one more time, what's causing that hum? What's happening here, since this is a half wave rectifier, each of these little bumps is being, you know, it's like really, really fast bumps. You know, most of this is gone, but there's still quite a bit still quite a bit at the top so all those little tiny bumps is is what you're hearing that's what's causing that thing you can almost it almost sounds like a minor very minor minor uh, motor boating you know well that's what does it okay and uh, i I've, I've got this wired in just like it was originally by the way okay uh one more thing uh i'm borrowing a piece of video from our good friend and subscriber Brian who is a radio phono TV nut he recently bought a, a radio a solid state radio transistor and he had a hum problem almost identical to this one I want you to hear it so listen well so while you're listening to that 
all set up for the uh, for the next segment of this video. All right, let's turn it on and give it a test. Sounds like we have a bad filter capacitor. But we are passing a signal, so that's a good sign. Okay, let's open it up and fix this little problem. Right now, both capacitors, both filter caps, this one and this one, are out of the circuit. We didn't do that last time. We just took one and rehooked it, and then took the second one and reconnected that, so you can see the difference between the two. Now we have both of them out of the circuit. Listen to that mess. Wow, it's a combination of everything, okay? All right, now you know what a bad filter caps sound like. You should be, there should never again be any doubt in your mind as to, you know, where to go if you hear these sounds. The last thing to do in this power supply, we beat to death, like I said, everything else. The last thing to do is mess with this little resistor here. Now you'll notice that this resistor, just before, just before the, the voltage goes through it, it kicks off here and it puts out 110 volts. The 110 volts goes here, there, and wherever else it's needed, but mostly, mostly right here, I think, for the, uh, the output stage. And then after it goes through the resistor, it changes down to, you know, it kicks it down to 90 volts. Now that 90 volts is used for the plate voltages for the rest of the tubes. We have 90 here, we've got 50 here, and 90 over here, and anywhere else the voltage is needed on the screen grids and whatnot, even on the screen grid. See, we have a 90 volt on the screen grid here. So my question is, or your question should be, what happened, you know, on these old resistors, they always increase in value when they get old. What happens if that go? that's a 1500-ohm, 2-watt resistor. What happens if that thing were to increase by another 1,000 ohms? Suppose it went up to 2,500 ohms. How would that affect the operation of the radio? And for that matter, what would happen if it decreased? How would that affect the radio? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to lift one end of this resistor up right here, and we're going to add 1,000 ohms to it. A 2 watt 1000 ohm resistor right here. We're going to put that in series with it. I'm just going to gator wire it in between uh, the top of, you know, wherever this is soldered in. We're going to gator wire this in there, which will add 1000 ohms to it. Then we'll go ahead and after we've seen how that works, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to decrease it by about half. We're going to uh, put, uh, we're going to gator wire, uh, we're going to keep the end removed and we're going to gator wire across that thing with this essentially out of the circuit. We're going to gator wire in 800 ohms. These are both 5 watt resistor. <clears throat> we'll gator in 800 ohms. So we'll have 2500 ohms versus 800 ohms and we'll see how it affects the operation of the radio. Every, you know, I get a lot of questions sometimes. Well, what's the tolerance? You know, can, can, if I'm reading 2000 ohms on that, you know, sh is that going to do anything? Should I change it out? Or, you know, I, the same kind of questions I used to have. Or it's half its value. What is that going to ruin? Is that going to ruin the tubes? Is that going to ruin my output transformer? What's it going to do? I don't know. All right, let's find out. Well, here we go. I've got the one side of the two watt resistor. That's a 1500 ohm, brown, green, and red. That would be one, five, and two zeros, which is 1500. I got one end of it lifted from the board and I've connected the gator wire underneath to where it was soldered. And then the gator wire is coming around. It is going through this uh, 1000 ohm resistor right here. Right there. And I have another gator wire coming around. And here's the end of that thing. We're going to clip it right there. Right like that. Okay. Now if I can keep it up there where it won't fall over, we'll be all right. All right, I think we've got her hooked up good enough for our little test. Uh, keep in mind what we're doing is we're adding a thousand ohms, a thousand more ohms in a series, which is 1500 watt, I mean 1500 ohm two watt resistor. So now we got about 2500 ohms of resistance, and all I did was take you know the resistor end out, put a gator wire on it, ran the gator wire all the way down, and hooked one end of it to a thousand ohm resistor, the other end 
came all the way up and we hooked it to where the resistor was originally soldered in okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn up the volume we're going to listen to it for a few seconds and then we're going to take this gator wire off of the end of this resistor which will cause the radio to quit of course which would be right here it'll stop then i'm going to go ahead and hook the gator wire to the other side which would eliminate this uh, resistor and put the 1500 back in. We'll go back and forth a couple of times and listen to see what happens. I have the volume all the way up. There we go. Well, I, got, well, I guess we really don't need it all the way up. We'll go about halfway. It does pretty good even all the way up though, huh? All right, now. All right, let's take the resistor. Let's jump. Let's get rid of the 100 or the uh, thousand ohms and put the 1500 back in. You hear a difference? I don't. Let's go back. Put it back in. Maybe a slight decrease. Maybe a slight decrease. Almost doubling that resistor. All right, well, you be the judge on that one. What we're talking here is just, I'm just trying to show you how tolerant these radios are and still give you the same basic performance, how, how tolerant the components are. Now let's test it with half the amount of resistance. We, we tested it with the 1,000 extra ohms. We took it out. Now we're going to test it with just 800 ohms resistance, and I had to move the alligator clip from that side of the resistor back to this side and throwing these two into the circuit and this one uh, is has been removed completely because I hooked on this side okay now let's turn up the volume see what happens all the way again I just don't see a whole lot of difference let's back up here a little ways 800 ohms versus 15. That ought to tell you a lot about resistor and capacitor tolerance in this radio. That's it. I think we have finally beat the power supply to death. Let's move on to the last little item. Before we wrap this video up, we're going to do a little bit of a, an experiment. It's come to my attention from a very learned individual that it's possible. There's a theory. It's a theory, okay? You know, these antennas, this ferrite core on the antenna in these old radios has been exposed for how many years? You know, 30, 40, 50 years maybe uh, to the Earth's magnetic pull. You know, the magnetic flux of the Earth, the normal magnetic flux. Televisions now will become, believe it or not, the old TVs. Would actually, the picture tube would actually become magnetized over a period of time just by the Earth's magnetic uh, structure, the pull of the Earth. So the question is, maybe it also affects ferrite cores on these old, you know, ferrite core antennas. Maybe that ferrite core, it, you know, all the molecules have lined up in one direction over the years. And maybe, maybe, if we were to degauss it, you know how uh, on, a, uh, on a tape recorder you have to demagnetize the head with, a, uh, with a, a demagnetizing deal like this right here? I have one right here. This is what I demagnetize the heads on my, uh, on my reel to reel and on my uh, uh, cassette player. Okay, even on my 8-track player, I demagnetize them from time to time with this. Or on a television, they use that big round ring called a degaussing coil. Now, I could take a degaussing coil, which I have, or I could go ahead and use this little degausser or mag demagnetizer, whatever you want to call it. And I can try to demagnetize this thing and see if it improves reception. This is going to be an interesting experiment. So what I've done here is I've tuned the radio to a very weak station and cranked up the volume all the way. Now this is what we get. Now that's with the volume up all the way. And it's tuned in as close as I can get it. Okay, let's just listen to it for just a few seconds. Now 
All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the radio. I'm gonna take this demagnetizer and we're gonna degauss it and turn it back on and see if the volume increases or the sensitivity or anything works better than it did prior to the degaussing. So let's get this thing set up. All right, here we go. And I'm gonna treat it just like I do the heads on the, uh, on the recorders. I'm gonna come in from a distance. Yeah, I'm going to come in straight in nice and slow, just like I do on the heads, because I don't know any other way, really. And I'm going to run this baby up. I'm going to run it across the top. Okay. I'm going to run it way down here at the bottom. We're going to degauss this thing completely, just completely demagnetize it as much as I can. And I'm even going to do it to the metal around it, anything that might affect it, okay? All right. You know, it probably wouldn't even hurt to do the, the IF cans. All right. I think that's going to be enough right there. So now we can just go ahead and back it away and unplug it. And then plug the radio back in and see if there's any improvement. All right, here's the results. I haven't changed the volume. I just cranked the volume all the way back up to what it was before. I don't I don't hear much difference maybe a slight difference I don't know I would say that degaussing it changed nothing I'm gonna do it one more time though just to see one more time and that matter of fact I might try degaussing these uh, IF cans <laughs> what do we got to lose right All right, here goes now, I know those are aluminum cans, and it probably won't make a bit of difference, but I'm willing to try anything. I mean, that's what, we're all, that's what this whole series is all about, you know? We'll just go ahead and just degauss the heck out of it. Let me try the other one. Then we'll go down there. I know it's not going to do a bit of good, no difference at all, but I'm willing to try it. All right, let's do the antenna one more time. We can get underneath it real good now, over the top, real good. That's right, put it on the end. All right, I think that's gonna be enough of that. All right, here's the second time results. Yeah, it might be a little louder, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Could be just the strength of the signal, you know, coming in, wavering. Anyway, that's the end of that little experiment. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, next time, next time, we will be going from starting at the antenna. We're going to work our way all the way through here. So until then, this is John.